Yeah, well, then that kind of week. Okay, try again. Okay. <laughs> Thanks everybody for coming to our 12th annual cannabis convention. I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and then uh, also, uh, I think uh, being a lot of fun is Jeremiah. He's been poking around here. He's, there he is, the, the headmaster of cannabis culture, I might say, in some ways now. He's really uh, plugging away. It's uh, awesome to see the, the uh, uh, work being done through the online cannabis culture. And we're being on, uh, featured as well here today. And so, uh, this is Jeremiah's first chance to, to speak with us. Uh, I'm sure it'll be at uh, numerous Hempology events, speaking and helping teach at the UBC as well. So we're delighted to have him here uh, with his uh, burst of energy. Can and, it be your uh, Ted? Yeah. All right, right, thank you. And uh, our, our, our keynote speaker would like to be on the road right now, uh, Professor John Anderson. Is actually, I just. In. He's the 
head of the criminology department at PIU, who's coming here today. He's a member of Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. And so uh, he's our keynote speaker. As I said, Jody will wrap it up after that. So we've got uh, you know several hours here of uh, non-stop action. And uh, oh, okay. Um, sorry, this just came to my attention. News flash. Uh, February 24th uh, at 7 o'clock on Cormorant Street, 7-12, I don't know, the, the, the Martin Bachelor Gallery, there's a documentary that Green Party is sponsoring on the War on Drugs, it's a, a lead film, uh, The Damage done, done, A Drug War Odyssey. <coughs> I think I may have that as one of the prizes today, that's a 10 minute video, is that right? Um, Ted, that's actually, it's, it's about an hour and a half documentary, sorry, I meant to sort of catch you outside the yeah, this is be coming up February 24th. Um, if you want to come see the document, the damage done, it's an outstanding uh, documentary about the war on drugs. Um, there's, there's posters uh, for it just inside the conference room. I'll be there giving a brief introduction to the document and answering some questions afterwards. Cool. Um, in fact, uh, yeah, we'll probably bring you the Are you here for most of the event? Uh, just, I'm here for part of it. Okay. Well, um, before you leave, I'll give you another opportunity as you know, the room fills up to bring that. Uh, thanks so much. Um, so, uh, yeah, we have uh, a presentation from Link today. It's just, like I said, uh, two and a half hours of nonstop uh, speaking and, and teaching and learning. So, um, I think you know, with that uh, introduction to the day, I'm going to get our friend uh, Bill up here to talk to us about what's happening with them these days. So, thank you very much. Yeah. Tremendous amount. 
the, uh, the root system of uh, hemp plants are very long and fibrous. They come down quite a ways. And they tend to break up the soil, uh, you know, the hard packed soil, and it, and it makes it a lot easier for uh, replanting other crops later on. Also, uh, puts a lot of nitrogen back into the soil. So it's actually kind of fertilizing the soil after it's gone through. A lot of plants suck up tremendous amounts of uh, nutrition from the soil. This is one that actually puts nutrition back. So uh, it's, it is uh, one of the, the major, major uh, beautiful plants that uh, have ever, has ever been created. So uh, I'm going to just uh, blast through a bunch of stuff because I know Ted's got a huge uh, variety of speakers and very exciting day. Uh, but I, I just want to um, go through some of the things historically and present day that have been used with hemp. So I mentioned paper. Uh, we can uh, we can utilize hemp paper for uh, uh, the reason it's a little bit better, I'd say, than tree paper or tree-based things. Anything that's grown agriculturally uh, has a lot of uh, it's a chemical called lignum in it uh, that trees have. And in order to get the lignum out to produce paper, there's a whole chemical process that has to happen. And so uh, pulp and paper mills tend to be fairly uh, harsh on the, um, environmentally, they're harsh on the, the air quality and, and the water that comes out. Uh, if you grow your paper from using flax, hemp, corn, uh, there's, there's not so much lignum, there's not a requirement for all that chemical treatment. So the, there's some uh, samples of hemp papers. It's still kind of expensive in this day and age, but it's too bad because I'm, I've always hoped and continue to hope, and I know it will happen, uh, that, you know, a bigger industries will, will come along and say, you know what, we're going to convert our pulp mill over here so we can utilize the uh, crops instead of going and cutting a bunch of trees down. And paper, 2,000 years ago, Chinese invention, here it is. Uh, food products. Um, in in uh, Canada, about, well, <laughs> quick history, which I'm sure most of you know anyways, in uh, 1934, 35. Sorry, I, 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 I got to interrupt a bit back to the hemp bit. If you guys haven't read in the recent issue of the newspaper, our friend Kristen described how to make hemp just like the Chinese did thousands of years ago. In fact, we, we put this one in a frame uh, for her school project. She <laughs> made various grades of hemp paper. Yay. And so you can see this is Mountain Mint, one of the strains of pot we sell at our club. <laughs> We made some paper out of it. We have other thicker, coarser grades at the store as well. And uh, yeah, it's really neat to show it off. Uh, yeah, that is yeah. Um, As a food product, we know that uh, hemp's been used for thousands and thousands of years as well. Um, in, in the 30s at some time, the, the, through the uh, brains of the United States government, they banned uh, hemp through the marijuana tax law. And unbeknownst to most farmers who were growing hemp, this is during the Depression. You can imagine what was happening to farmers during the Depression anyway. They were, their, their soils were being blown away if they were prairie farmers. And here they had a crop that uh, could withstand a lot of the difficulties that, that corn and wheat were not able to withstand. And the American government banned it. Um, in about uh, 15 years ago, Canada reversed that. Uh, so now farmers in Canada, farmers in most European countries, are allowed to grow hemp. Uh, we're talking industrial hemp, cannabis sativa. Um, it, uh, in Canada, is only, actually, the only use we have at the moment for it is for seeds. It is a very healthy product. Have two. Uh, there's a, a number of companies now. There's one in Ontario, Hempola. Uh, there's Manitoba Harvest. Uh, in, we we sell a lot of hemp parts. This is actually a trademark brand. Even though a lot of people like to use it uh, from Lethbridge, Alberta. Um, to in order for this seed to come off the farm, 
it has to be unable to be grown. So these have the sh outer shell taken off. This is the heart of the seed. Um, full of omega-3, 6, and 9. So it's a, a very healthy form. It's also a lot of protein. So for people who are cutting back on their meat supply of protein and need to balance up uh, that hemp is a, a really excellent source. Uh, in the last few years, we've met a very lovely young man. He's a farmer from Saskatchewan. And uh, we know Blake because he lives now in Victoria. So we're, we're, our tendency is to, uh, if a customer is asking, then we always sort of slide them off and say, hey, get the good seed. Um, he, he is growing his crops uh, organically. This is certified organic e-hull hemp seeds. Exact, looks exactly the same as the ones in the bucket there. Same amount, same price. Uh, he also creates a powder form in which you can uh, mix it in <coughs> as, as a flour if you're baking. You can put some flour in. It works really well in pancakes. Um, you can also put it into smoothies. It sort of blends in a lot more easily than, uh, than the seeds themselves. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit while well, I've got Blake on my mind. Uh, he's a young man. He's uh, 29. I had a little meeting with him yesterday. That's how I found out. He uh, grew up on a farm in Saskatchewan. And he's a young man. The family went to California, but they maintained a farm back in, in the prairies. Uh, all the time, their parents were trying to sell the farm, but it's dirt cheap, unfortunately. Nobody would buy it. And, uh, the good news was, Blake and his brother said, hey, Mom, Dad, let's go back and you know, let us use the farm and, and we want to go ahead. So he, he got totally involved and he had to go around rural Saskatchewan and find uh, machinery that would allow him to, to cut down the plants. A really strong, hard, fibrous plant. So regular farming uh, equipment just all gum, gets all gummed up. So, but he, he went back and he said, oh, right there, back 40, there's a guy that's got a machine from 1932, and he would buy a couple hundred bucks and fix it all up, and that's what he used to, to do as him. So we're still in, in kind of an infantile stage in Canada around um, uh, the growing of hemp. And it will blossom and bloom. I totally I have my... Uh, heart and soul into this. Two negative things. First of all, the big one is that the United States, in their infinite wisdom, this is 2011, the growing of this type of plant is still banned in the US. You cannot become a hemp farmer in the United States of America. So we're, we're caught in that kind of conundrum because uh, so much of what we do in Canada is inspired from the states. So you know, if Americans got in, there's 350 million of them, so pretty soon the technology's there and it starts to happen. Here in Canada, there's hardly any of us, and we sort of bump along and grab old machinery to do the, to do the job. Um, so, so we're kind of, it's kind of always in the back. Uh, this, the second big thing, we mostly what I do at my, through our stores is, is we're, we're a clothing store, basically. And people say, well, you know, does your hemp come from Canada? You know, they're growing it from Saskatchewan, like you're doing the seeds? No. Because we don't have a textile mill. <coughs> that is probably a couple million dollars or however many millions of dollars uh, that it would take to create a textile mill. And I know the Americans will have it in a flash. And they could probably convert <coughs> their cotton mills to, uh, to weave hemp if they were allowed, if they're allowed the farmers to grow it. So there's a whole lot of issues around uh, around what I do that, that, are, that are legal issues. Uh, and it's very, very kind of disheartening. The good news is there's a whole bunch of people out there working on it. And uh, in my lifetime, it will happen. I am convinced of it. So um, I want to just uh, flash on a couple of other things. Uh, Ted always likes to bring this. This is a uh, head um, uh, installation. And I'm not sure if this is the same kind of use, but I know that BMW and Mercedes-Benz use hemp insulation in their vehicles. 
It's uh, one of the natural, another natural attribute of this wonderful planet is how insular it is. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's an amazing thing. So here are these two big European car companies that use hemp insulation in, in their vehicles. Yes, so most of the inside um, bracing, the extra impact bracing of vehicles is hemp plastic now. There you go. Yeah. So it's just come along. One of the, the main uh, uses of hemp oil in, in the old days was uh, in paint. And uh, what happened to the paint industry when, when the Americans banned hemp, uh, the growing of hemp, was that the paint industry floundered for a very, very long time. Now, coming back, here's a hemp shield, penetrating wood deck finish. Uh, so you can, you know, it's all coming back. Uh, over the, over the centuries, one of the uh, main uses of, of hemp was in uh, ropes. And uh, this is just a, a little variety. This is a Romanian, Romanian or Hungarian, I'm not sure. My glasses can't read it. Uh, uh, product. And we, we've got them from really thin, 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 right up to this size and, and even a couple of big ropes. Uh, it was always used on sailing ships uh, because it's one of the natural fibers that won't break, doesn't break down in water. And so uh, before the advent of nylon, hemp rope was the main thing. In fact, hemp was also used on in the sails, the uniforms of the sailors. It was uh, because of the paper. And I don't know why this book's sitting here. Maybe I could ask Ted what. <laughs> Uh, oh, the so Bibles in the old days were always on hemp paper, and uh, and to this day in Europe, they would still prefer when they're doing like really expensive family Bibles that they pass down that they're on hemp paper because it doesn't yellow and it doesn't degrade the way other uh, tree type papers do. Um, so we've got food, we've got and the word the word cannabis. Uh, actually is the root of the word canvas. So a lot of the artwork in the uh, uh, mid you know, 1500s, 1600s, 1700s would have been painted on hemp canvases. So sailing ship sails were, uh, were, were canvas sails from hemp. Uh, a very, very uh, unique and mainstay of uh, most industries up until the Americans banned it in 1935, so it's changed a whole bunch of stuff. Um, coming down, uh, we're going to show you some some clothing things. I'm wearing hemp shirt, hemp pants, and hemp shoes. Hemp under, no, I'm <laughs> Ted uh, would. <laughs> uh, one of the, the commonest things that we sell is our bread and butter item, our t-shirts. Uh, we have long and short sleeve and bands. We have different neck styles for ladies. Why, why do it? Uh, for me, it's because this is the plant that is good on the planet, good for the planet. You grow really well without all the chemicals. Uh, the, the other natural fiber that's used for clothing is cotton. Wonderful fiber. The only problem is in our industrial age, if it's not organically grown, it uses tremendous amounts of chemicals. And those chemicals uh, get into our water systems, uh, they poison uh, so much stuff. So just as an environmental issue, which is actually my biggest passion is the environmental issues, this plant outperforms most other plants uh, for that reason. It's just, it's just really great. I wanted to mention very briefly about that, that uh, uh, I read this on the internet this morning, so it must be true. Uh, this is a, a metric tons, T-O-N-N-E-F. 25 tons of biomass per hectare from growing um, hemp. So it's for, for uh, helping, uh, helping nature with, uh, you know, we need to uh, help me out with biomass. You, you know, it's just for uh, climatic change and everything, we need, we need the oxygen and nitrogen cycle to keep going and hemp is one of the best ones. Uh, we think that uh, 
Uh, if you want to be a farmer, you're going to make way more money with this crop than you're going to make with uh, growing conventional crops. And so we would like to uh, see more and more young people get involved in farming and push <coughs> for growing of hemp so that we can get the textile mills, so we can get more hemp products uh, eaten and utilized for the health of the planet, for the health of each of us. Here, here. I just will say one last thing is, uh, I'm going to have a couple of things to give away here. Uh, hemp body care products as well. Um, our biggest organ of our body is our skin. And if we want to eat healthy, which I hope everybody attempts to do, then you go organic. If the biggest organ in your body is your skin, what you're putting on your body is also very important. And uh, we, we carry, this is uh, Gentle Earth, it's made here in Victoria. We have all kinds of soap, shampoos, creams, you name it. Hemp oil is put into it, and then when it goes on your skin, it's that much healthier. In the same sense, I think that wearing clothes is the same. You know, what do I want against my body? Do I want a petrochemical, a nylon, or do I want something natural? That one. My choice is natural. So, so those are some things. Um, also, a very local product, some hemp grown on Vancouver Island and made into very nutritious uh, food bars from a little store called For Good Measure, which is just down here in Capitol Bay. Uh, Mark uh, has a small farm. And by the way, you need to have a license to grow hemp. You can't just go and grow it. You have to have a criminal check. You have to have a farm of a certain size. I believe it's 10 acres. Uh, they have to know the GPS location of your field. And they will come twice a year, it then, I mean the government, to take a test down to make sure there's no THC in the growing. If you're a corn farmer or a, or a wheat farmer or a pig farmer, you don't have to go through all that BS. But uh, apparently, you have to be growing hemp. A uh, couple of questions, and I'm going to give you a chance to win <laughs> for good measure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's a good one? Ted, Ted, uh, oh, Ted's got a beautiful green tie on, which is made of him, uh, here in Victoria, by the way. <laughs> give me a question. Give me a question. What's the name of the machine that is used to uh, harvest hemp out of the field? <laughs> hemp harvester? Cotton gin. Cotton gin? Dee? Thrasher? Dee? 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 No, that takes, that takes the core out of the center of the, 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 the uh, yeah. stock. The decorticator? Yeah. They, it's right in the field though. It chops it down in the field and then it breaks it up and separate, separates the, Before it the, dries? the birds yeah. right in, right yeah. off the, the field. That's why when George Clitson invented it, it became uh, so much more valuable to the farmers all of a sudden because mm -hmm. it could be harvested in the field and they'd have some very nice fiber in the birds, you know, coming out of the back of, it's basically a big combine. That would have the two products oh, coming out of the end of it. Oh, wow. So a decorticator. No, a decorticator. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, how many that acres of hemp, uh, or how many acres of trees do you need to produce the same amount of fiber as you could of uh, one acre of hemp? Over oh, a period of time. Over a 20 year period. Over a 20 year period. Yeah. Oh. Four. 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 87. Four. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yes. All right. What, what great. Huge uh, American industrialists uh, believe there's a couple of them, but DuPont. specific one I'm thinking of. Henry Ford. Uh, Henry Ford. Henry Ford. Ford. You can't give the answer until I give the answer. <laughs> <laughs> and I usually ask this one every time. I give the answer for me. Uh, I remember. He, he, uh, uh, he believed in uh, uh, growing products, and he made a, he made a plastic that uh, had a lot of hemp in it, 
as well as some other things like soybeans. And it was made of plastic out of natural items. Henry Ford. Henry Ford. Ford. But you, you, know, you can't win twice. <laughs> How about <laughs> Henry Ford? <laughs> it was really hungry for one of them. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Nice. And, uh, okay, one more question. Let's say. Uh, Where's the first I have a question. Where was the first half? Whoa. Whoa. No. Nelson. In, uh, there you go. Was it Nelson? We got her. We got her. Yeah. We got a yeah. winner. We got a winner. We got a winner. Nelson. We got a winner. Nelson. 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 Actually, Nelson is not quite correct. Oh. 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 Oh.